In the second part of the slideshow discussing the causes of stammering, I'll outline some of the research evidence that people who stammer make more speech errors. And I'll use a couple of real life examples to demonstrate how speech error repair and speech error avoidance can both lead to the production of disfluencies. Then finally, I'll highlight some practical implications of all of this theory for people who stammer. Regarding the relationship between speech errors and disfluencies, perhaps the first thing that we need to be absolutely clear about is that disfluencies are not speech errors. However, people may become disfluent when they try to avoid, prevent or repair speech errors. As mentioned in the previous slideshow, it's likely that most people who stammer have some or other underlying impairment that predisposes them to producing a lot of errors when they speak. However, whether or not those speech errors actually lead to stammering depends on how they respond to those errors. So what is a speech error? In fact, there are many types of different error that people make when they speak. Some of these errors are categorical, such as when someone accidentally says left when they mean to say right, or when they accidentally say melon when they mean to say lemon. Others are more subtle, such as when a sound or word doesn't come out exactly in the way we intended. In the next few slides, I'll clarify how our attempts to repair or avoid speech errors of all kinds can lead to disfluencies and also potentially to stammering. Because speech errors may result in misunderstandings and sometimes even get us into trouble, all of us monitor our speech at least sometimes for signs of such errors. There are a number of ways we can do this, including, for example, listening to our auditory feedback, paying attention to our speech-related muscle movements, and observing listeners' responses to what we say. Whatever method we use, generally speaking, the more important it is to us to ensure the listener understands what we're trying to communicate, the more vigilantly we monitor our performance. And because people who stammer experience communication breakdown or failure more often than people who don't stammer, it's likely that they tend to monitor their speech and the responses of their listeners more vigilantly than non-stammerers. When we notice that we've made an error, we may attempt to repair it in order to minimise the possibility that the listener will misinterpret what we intend to communicate. Alternatively, we may try to anticipate potential errors before they occur and prevent them from happening in the first place. Both error repair and error avoidance can result in disfluent speech. And the more errors we try to repair or avoid, the more disfluent we're likely to be. The types of disfluency that result from error repair and error avoidance are somewhat different. To clarify this, here's a recording of George Bush making and then repairing a speech error while talking about the Iraq war. Pay particular attention to, to the difference in fluency before and after he notices the speech error. Also, notice that the error itself is actually spoken completely fluently, so the error doesn't disrupt the flow of speech, whereas trying to correct it does. They want us to leave. That's what they want us to do. And I think the world would be better off if we did leave. If we didn't, if we, if, if we left, the world would be worse. Clearly, there are times when it would pay off if one could reduce the likelihood of making errors in the first place. And one of the commonest ways people avoid making errors is by slowing down. One of the benefits of slowing down is that it affords us the opportunity to scan over the phrase we're about to say before we actually say it out loud to check whether or not it's correct and appropriate. And if, while scanning the phrase we've planned, we notice that it contains some errors, we can quickly reformulate it before we start to speak. The technical term for this pre-articulatory editing is covert error repair. And it's probable that everyone engages in this to a certain extent, especially in situations where it's important not to accidentally say anything that's wrong or inappropriate. All the same, some people engage in it more than others. Because covert error repair requires the speaker to reformulate what he plans to say, and because reformulating takes some time to do, and I should add that some people are faster at it than others, 
Engaging in covert error repair can sometimes have the unintended side effect of making people disfluent, because they're still busy reformulating what they want to say when the appropriate time comes to start speaking. Consequently, when people take care to avoid making speech errors, their speech tends to become somewhat slower and more disfluent. But generally speaking, that's a price worth paying if it saves them from saying something inappropriate and getting into trouble. Everyone engages in a certain amount of error repair and error avoidance behaviour when speaking to other people. And most of the time, such behaviour doesn't significantly interfere with the fluency of their speech. However, if a person's prone to making a lot of speech errors, or if he's slow at reformulating what he wants to say when he notices an error, it's likely that such covert error repair and avoidance behaviour will interfere much more with his speech production and make him substantially more disfluent. In the early 1990s, two Dutch researchers, Albert Postma and Hermann Kolk, hypothesized that the reason people who stammer are so disfluent is because they notice and try to covertly repair significantly more speech errors than normally fluent speakers. Postman Colt called this the covert repair hypothesis. One potential way of investigating whether or not people who stammer make more speech errors than non-stammerers is by asking them to recite tongue twisters over and over again and to count how many errors they make. In 2011, Martin Corley and myself published the findings of just such a tongue twister experiment, which we had carried out at the University of Edinburgh. For the experiment, we asked 32 stammerers and 32 normally fluent control participants to recite tongue twisters over and over again, and we found that the participants who stammer made approximately twice as many speech errors as the normally fluent participants. Because the participants were asked to recite the tongue twisters in time to a metronome beat, they didn't have sufficient time to engage in covert error repair, so they tended to speak the errors out loud. Nevertheless, to double-check that the errors that they made really were formulation errors, and not errors resulting from articulation difficulty or from stuttering. We also asked the participants to recite some tongue twisters in their inner speech, inside their heads, without making any mouth movements, and to stop and to self-report any errors that they noticed themselves making. In this inner speech condition, we found exactly the same pattern of results, with a stammering group once again making approximately twice as many errors as the non-stammerers. The high number of errors made by the stammerers in their inner speech suggests that at least some of the error-proneness of people who stammer is due to poor or impaired speech planning, quite irrespective of whether or not they experience difficulties with articulation. In our experiment, because of the way it was designed, we were only able to check the numbers of word onset errors and word order errors that participants made. And we found that participants who stammer made approximately twice as many of both of these types of error compared to normally fluent controls. In other words, the participants who stammer were twice as likely to accidentally say words with the wrong initial sound and twice as likely to say the words in the wrong order. These were the only types of error that we counted, but it's likely that people who stammer are prone to making large numbers of other types of error as well. And in light of the findings from brain imaging studies that I discussed in the previous slideshow, it would not be at all surprising to find that, in addition to making lots of categorical errors, the general accuracy or precision with which stammerers articulate their words is lower than that of non-stammerers. In fact, there are now a number of studies whose findings suggest that the articulatory abilities of adults who stammer are less well developed than those of normally fluent speakers. For example, back in 2000, Kleinow and Smith published the findings of a study that compared the amount of articulator variability in the speech of adults who stammer and non-stammering controls. They mounted sensors on participants' foreheads and lower lips 
and monitored the amount of movement that occurred when they repeated the phrase by Bobby a puppy over and over again. Kleinow and Smith found that the articulatory movements of the adults who stammer were indeed significantly more variable than those of the non-stammering controls. Interestingly, they also found that when reciting sentences that were longer and more complex, the articulatory variability of the stammerers became disproportionately greater. In 2015, Kleinow and Smith repeated this experiment, this time comparing the speaking abilities of young children who stammer with those of age-matched, normally fluent controls. And they found the same results, that the articulation of the young children who stammer was significantly more variable than that of the controls. The fact that these differences were already present in young children suggests that they're likely to have already been present even before their stammering began. As more research findings accumulate, it starts to look increasingly likely that even when people who stammer are not actually stammering, their speech is nevertheless not normal. Certainly when considered as a group, their speech is more error-prone and also more imprecise than that of people who do not stammer. As I explained earlier in this slideshow, the researchers Posmer and Koch hypothesized in their covert repair hypothesis that people who stammer engage in large amounts of speech error repair because their speech is highly error prone. However, a number of stammering researchers have proposed an alternative explanation, namely that stammerers engage in large amounts of error repair because they're excessively perfectionistic and have a tendency to try to repair large numbers of very minor errors that don't need to be repaired. In fact, this alternative explanation for stammerers' large numbers of disfluencies had originally been proposed back in the 1940s by Professor Wendell Johnson at the University of Iowa. Johnson hypothesized that people who stammer tend to hold beliefs that are unreasonably perfectionistic and that these beliefs played a major role in predosing them to stammering. He also pro proposed that such beliefs tend to be passed on to people who stammer by their parents, teachers and other important people in their lives. Since then, a number of other researchers, including Barbara Amster and Evelyn Klein, have also proposed a link between perfectionism and stammering. And Amster and Klein have developed a form of cognitive therapy for people who stammer to reduce their perfectionistic beliefs. Overall, however, very little research has ever been conducted to investigate whether or not people who stammer really are more perfectionistic. In 2015, doctors Martin, Martin Corley, Eleanor Drake and myself published the findings of an online survey we had undertaken in order to test for, perf for perfectionism in people who stammer. In the survey, we asked 81 stammerers and 81 normally fluent speakers of the same age, gender and education to complete a psychometric test called the Frost Multidimensional Perfectionism Scale, or FMPS for short. Specifically, we asked each of the participants to re read the 35 statements that the FMPS contained and assign the rating from 1 to 5 to each of these statements to indicate how closely it reflected their own beliefs. Here are some examples of the 35 statements participants were asked to rate. Each of these 35 FMPS statements reflects the belief that's commonly held by people with perfectionistic tendencies. In fact, perfectionism is a multidimensional construct, characterized by a number of different yet closely related beliefs, and perfectionists differ in the extent to which they hold each of these beliefs. Some perfectionistic beliefs, such as a belief in the importance of maintaining high personal standards, can be positively beneficial and are associated with high achievements in life, whereas others, such as the belief that it's important not to make mistakes, are associated with a range of psychological disorders. Over the past few decades, the FMPS has revealed that various combinations of, perfect of perfectionistic beliefs are common in people suffering from social anxiety disorder, 
depression, obsessive compulsive disorder and eating disorders. However, prior to our own survey, the FMPS had never been used to examine perfectionistic beliefs in people who stutter. When we analysed the responses that our participants provided to the 35 FMPS statements, we found that for the purpose of our research, their responses could most usefully be categorised into four different categories. Namely, responses reflecting the belief that it's important to maintain high personal standards, responses reflecting the belief that it's important to be highly organised in one's life, Responses reflecting a high level of concern about making mistakes and a tendency to evaluate mistakes negatively. And responses reflecting the belief that, p that the participants' parents had held high expectations of them and had been highly critical of their performance. Out of these four categories, the only significant difference we found between the stammerers and the non-stammerers was that the stammerers, as a group, were significantly more concerned about making mistakes. In contrast, there were no significant differences in the way the two groups rated the statements reflecting personal standards, organisation or parental expectations and criticism. So what can we conclude from these findings? In a nutshell, they suggest that compared to normally fluent speakers, People who stammer are not more perfectionistic, inasmuch as they do not aspire to higher personal standards. They are, however, significantly more concerned about making mistakes. Bearing in mind the findings of the tongue twister experiments that I described in previous slides, one very plausible explanation for this finding is that people who stammer more concerned about making mistakes primarily because they're more error-prone and thus have a tendency to make more mistakes, including more speech errors compared to normally fluent speakers. It is however important to bear in mind that the 35 FMPS statements that participants provided self-ratings for are statements that refer to all aspects of people's behaviour, not just to their speech and language skills. So further research is needed to clarify whether stammerers' raised levels of concern about making mistakes is a general behavioural trait or whether it's specifically related to their speech and language skills. If we consider together the findings that stammerers not only make more speech errors than normally fluent speakers, but they're also more concerned about making such errors, it wouldn't be at all surprising to find that when they speak, they tend to monitor their speech more vigilantly and put more effort into avoiding and correcting what er whatever errors they detect or anticipate. As mentioned earlier in this slideshow, research that has investigated the relationship between speech errors and disfluencies has demonstrated that the more a speaker monitors his speech for errors and the more he tries to avoid making speech errors, the more disfluent his speech becomes. In contrast, if a speaker makes less effort to speak accurately and to avoid errors, his speech will become more fluent. As people who stammer, if we don't make a special effort to speak, ac to speak accurately, we'll probably make somewhat more errors than normally fluent speakers would make. However, as I'll explain later in this module, in most speaking situations, making more speech errors is less of an obstacle to successful communication than stammering. Whatever the case, for optimal effectiveness, speech needs to be both clear and accurate enough to be understandable, yet also fast and fluent enough to fit within the window of opportunity. So, although it's sometimes important to be clear and accurate, it can be counterproductive to make too much effort to speak clearly and accurately if one's speech becomes very slow and disfluent as a result. Indeed, when speaking, especially in situations where there's time pressure and a limited window of opportunity to get a message across, people who stammer would often do better to make a compromise or trade-off and accept 
a somewhat lower level of clarity and accuracy than they might otherwise strive for. As mentioned at the beginning of this slideshow, a key thing to be absolutely clear about is that disfluencies are not speech errors. On the contrary, people become disfluent when they try to avoid, prevent or repair speech errors. The research that I've described in this slideshow strongly suggests that although as a group people who stammer are no more perfectionistic than non-stammerers, because their speech and language production mechanisms are generally less robust than those of non-stammerers, if they try to speak with the same speed and accuracy as non-stammerers, they're likely to become excessively disfluent. Inasmuch as disfluency results from a speaker's unhelpful attempts to avoid speech errors, it follows that in order to become more fluent and to stammer less severely, people who stammer need to reduce the standards of speech accuracy that they try to achieve. Essentially, if we can allow ourselves to make speech errors and if we can learn to make less effort to avoid, hide or repair such errors, then we're likely to find that we're able to speak substantially more fluently. Of course, sometimes this may result in listeners misunderstanding what we say. However, it's likely that in the majority of speaking situations, our increased fluency more than compensates for the slight reduction in speech accuracy that may occur as a result of making less effort.